recording, so I'll try to We're live. <laughs> it's part of the Anything you say can and will be. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, Did trust it? me, Sorry. I like um, <laughs> Yeah, you're in college. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, part of the Kentucky Blockchain Alliance, helping to get that moving forward. Um, also, starting these cross reality crypto clubs around the, around the world. Uh, getting ready to head off to Guangzhou, China in the morning. And then uh, that's for GTI all week. And then I head to Seoul, Korea for Block Seoul and Blockchain Seoul the following week. And then I come back. Um, busy week. Busy two weeks. <laughs> so that's uh, that's me. Anybody have any questions on any of that? Sure, me class and private. I'm Enrique. Yeah, this is Hi, Enrique. Anybody know him? Did you give an introduction, Greg? Greg Hurch. I've been coming around here since last November. Um, I know blockchains, I know Bitcoin's, it's taking a hit, as everybody knows, but no doubt it'll definitely, just like the tech bubble burst and went down there with 2000s, uh, cryptocurrencies, the way of the future, it's going to really skyrocket. I also run a, a libertarian group in Southern Indiana that meets the second Tuesday of each month. And there's a libertarian meetup that meets the third Tuesday of each month at Yorio's. Nice. Anybody has any libertarian bents, all welcome to come. Awesome. What days? I know two of them. Okay, um, the, King, the, the second Tuesday of each month at Kingfish in Jeffersonville along the river. Uh, the third Tuesday of each month at Yorio's. Um, I'll probably be the third Tuesday. I'm a Yorio's guy. I like pizza. Um, Third Tuesday, the Oreos on Baxter Avenue. There's that. I don't know. There's, that, there's actually two Oreos. So the 18th on the Oreos Baxter Avenue. Yes. I'll shoot some text. I'm just gonna touch the screen and it goes black. Okay. Are, are you on my Facebook? I don't. Uh, I can't. Greg Hirsch. Greg Hirsch. I'll look you up. All right. H E R. There's a hundred thousand. No, Greg G R E G. We need to get. You spell it right, it might be easy to find. My my Facebook picture icon is the Second Amendment graphic. Can't miss it. H-E-U-R? No, H-E-R-T-Z, like the car company, then S-C-H. Oh, okay. S-C-H. Yeah, I wasn't going to that. I'm glad you helped me there. Tom Lucas. I'm from Lexington. I've been in here since late August last year. Just learning. I don't know anything, you know, about it. Starting out. Just just been trying to learn as much as I can. I really try to get in, learn about the technology. Money's kind of a bonus. <laughs> this this next year, I plan on trying to get the investment part of it. So I'm not going to die. So I spent this first year just trying to learn the basics, of what it all what it's all about. Go from there. Ground floor. Well, I didn't get in with the. Uh, Wait, majority. you learn you learn before you put your money in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Skylar Cobb. I work here. I think I've met absolutely everybody. Um, I love crypto. I love the fundamental side of crypto and blockchain. What's going on? I'm Ryan. Uh, I um, went to did my undergrad at Louisville. Just finished my MBA uh, and just got a new job. So a lot of uh, crappy times the last year, but finally, you know. What's your new job? I work at El Toro uh, Digital Marketing downtown. Cool. It's a really awesome place. So, so I'm glad to be there. Uh, and I love crypto. Um, Kind of got in from the dark web side of things. That's how I got my, you know, first Bitcoin, and then kind of just sold it in the first dump there in, in 14, and then learned my ways. Uh, you know, kind of got back in in 15, and just been learning my ways. So I, I mainly do leverage trading the whole time now, um, and I mean I do invest, but pretty much just picking up coins and just trying to make more Bitcoin. So that's all. Uh, Blaine Senza, uh, who's here in Louisville, graduated from UVL two years from now, two years ago. And um, I just started here at CCG, and I'm super excited. Um, excited to see where crypto's going to go. Uh, I mean, it is the future. You're exactly right, Greg. And uh, I'm just excited to see where it's going to go. What did you say? Alex Smith and 
really big into the mining aspect of crypto. That's a lot of right now. Awesome. So you can sort of help directly. I don't think I'll ever mine, but give them another one. Yeah, the, that stuff you post in there is like, I, I need to read it because I, 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 I need some mining <laughs> aspect of my game because I do value mining. Well, I'm Roberto. I uh, take care of the, or I will be taking care of the education side of things with CCG. Um, in a personal level, I am a huge fan of blockchain technology. I think it could be part of the revolution around the world, so I'm just here to do my part. Andrew, you wanna? I guess is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we I can show this video if you'd like? Or? Um, well, you know, right now, like I said, we're playing with the. Uh, I was just showing him we transferred a bunch of items from one wallet to another that are on the blockchain. Um, it's in a test net right now. One of the things I know that's different about the 1155 standard versus the 721 is they are trying to perfect sending like um, from like a crap if you go onto a kickstarter page and you buy like 50 items 50 different types of collectibles um and then you you're they can transfer the whole package to you as one transaction on the blockchain which um none of the other standards would do that they're all individual transactions i can send five of these that's one transaction three of these is one transaction but they're trying to do like a shopping cart thing, which is really good. It's to me, it's like um, who in here has ever transferred cards on Magic the Gathering online? Well, basically, there to do the atomic swap kind of thing, you go in and say, Here's the 47 different collectible items that I want to trade to you, and you give me these 14 different tradable items in different quantities of each one. And, you know, with both sides says, yes, that's the transaction, boom, it just swaps. No going back. And that's uh, the, the atomic swaps that they're trying to get perfected on this. Um, looks like within the, uh, I'm talking directly with the developers, uh, within the next month they should have it up and going, and that means within two months we'll have it up, married in with the Sarah wallet, okay. with the Sarah app. So when you're running around town picking up all your, your goodies with Sarah, you go straight to your crypto wallet and you trade. What was it that your ERC number was? ERC eleven fifty five. But it's not cast in stone. But when I get back from Korea, I'll well, definitely know. You know, if we're definitely sticking with the eleven fifty five, or if we're going back over to seven twenty one. So. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, if you want to play that video, you can. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, play. I think it's only five minutes or so. There's yeah. a few people in here that. I haven't seen it. Is there one that was like animated, like almost an explainer? Um, Man, your internet is horrid. I laughed. Yeah. Okay. That's all in there. Oh, you're broadcasting as well. If and when Drew. Creating and publishing the next evolution of yeah. entertainment experience. This is cross reality or okay. XR, as we call it. That's Our team of industry have. veterans came together with the I belief in the that we put that up there and I've got a couple of videos right from professional platforms uh, uh, and produce the force to help other developers They're create not as good. <laughs> and bring cross reality content tied together in one virtual universe. Think of it as a hybrid. Of Pokemon Go, World of Warcraft, and Disney Quest. That's the Max Flight Simulator right up there. They've been partnered with us together. One possible experience across cell phones, uh, consoles, mm -hmm. PCs, be, augmented reality headsets, virtual reality headsets. Things. That's a two person simulator. It'll pull G's. We have a legendary team. Not only have we created and managed some of the top companies, helped create many of the top selling titles. We have handled the marketing for some of the largest successes in the industry. We have traveled all over the globe in search of the best cross-reality developers and content. By speaking at trade shows, conferences, and hackathons, all in order to devise the best possible plan for the future of entertainment. That's now we are reaching out to work with many third-party developers, such as Dodge Vision, 
Had they told me they were filming it, I would definitely have brought it. We're an indie company. Just got to be When we first heard about Silicon Axis, my team got so excited. Working next to the pros in the industry on the biggest AAA title, what a cool opportunity. If we make something cool and it generates virtual currency, we can turn that into cash when the game shifts. And better yet, I don't have to spend $40 million in advertising. They take care of that, so I can just focus on making the best content possible. We can make great content that all the users can enjoy in the virtual universe, and we get credit for it. We have a bunch of fun ideas. I can't wait to see what the developers come up with, too. Word, uh, man, we, yeah, love the <laughs> we grew up Silicon Nexus methodically through three profitable stages. First, what? by setting up marketing No, I'm saying I love the socks. It's transparency. Yeah, that's why I love it. This will help us build the developer ecosystem globally. Which, well, the cool part is they cut that video just to impress us that they want to work with us well before we were ever doing an ICO. That's awesome. They just wanted to work with our virtual currency because eventually they knew it would have value. They give us a distinct and powerful advantage over our competition. They provide high visibility and high touch for us, our developers, and our partners' new products. They build an unparalleled brand recognition and consumer confidence. They allow us to recruit developers and users all while driving the revenue we need to build and grow the platform. The Nexus Station is designed to take you and your friends through a magical journey of different virtual world interfaces. You know, it's money in the Engage your imagination, promote your budget, all to transform patrons into a cult like following of fanatics. In orientation, you learn the Silicon Nexus backstory, how yeah, these telepresence and wonderful technologies allow you to take over avatars on different worlds. Why those worlds can be completely different genres, basically how it all makes sense. In each progressive stage, you will earn a piece of a flying machine into your personal home account. Assembling these pieces will connect you to our online community and allow you to play on a lower end interface from home or on your mobile devices. Here's a few examples of the different levels of virtual reality content you will experience in the Nexus Station. That's a killer game. They're partnering up with us. We're playing that at the, uh, we had that in the, the back of the XR uh, uh, crypto club. I want to be a quarterback. That one and this next one. What? Just make like, I don't want a sports game. I just want to be a quarterback. Yeah. This video is much longer. I got the chopped up version of this one. But we're just now working with these two groups to take their uh, games across reality. So all the way across all platforms. It's on ico.siliconexus.com, or I can email it to you. So the, the crowdfunding site that we were building prior to doing an ICO, and we kind of put it on pause. That's why we're doing this private presale with it. Actually, we've done 204000 not 104000 
um, 100,000 was in a direct Bitcoin transaction. Uh, but we don't want to kick that into a live uh, Kickstarter until we get about 150,000 yeah. fanatics. Sweet. Well, we'll go ahead and jump into the market discussion. I know a lot of the talk over the past few months or so have been when is the Bitcoin ETF going to get approved? I know up until now there's been nine that have been rejected by the SEC. They're kind of claiming that crypto is just not really mature enough. There's not really enough um, volume across the different exchanges and just a lot of questions that, that they need to find answers to. Um, which really, I mean, I'll open up the discussion on this, but just talking to Brian and a, a few other people on timelines for things like these, I know I really don't think it'll happen until sometime next year, uh, but a lot of people are pushing for, uh, I know, I think they pushed it till sometime later this month for the VanEck um, CBOE Bitcoin ETF. But, you know, some news came out end of last week that Coinbase actually tapped BlackRock uh, which does a lot of the just traditional ETS for some guidance on just going through the process. Uh, I thought that was pretty big. You know, if anybody can get the uh, Bitcoin ETF approved, I think it could probably be Coinbase. Uh, and then again, with the VanX CBOE ETF, I think that'll have a better chance of getting approved than the others as well. But has anybody here really done very much ETF uh, investing, trading with uh, traditional markets or anything? Have you? How, uh, I mean, how do you like them? I like them because they're a whole bunch of uh, roll or just a lot of companies in one. Yeah. And then you average them all together, which is biased that way. Yeah. So a mutual uh, fund. No. <laughs> a mutual fund is different. Risk is already stay that way. If one doesn't do well, it's their standards they can kick them out to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess my question with this is it just going to be Bitcoin? Like, how would they group? Those together, I guess, would it be from a bunch of different exchanges? I think it would be Bitcoin at first. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like copper as an ETF. I'm pretty sure it was the last one to get approved. And it's I think they have other um, exchanges put into it or other um, companies in the one, just, not just copper itself, but this ETF. So then, would you think that how do you have multiple companies? Can copper you, mining companies. You copper or, mining companies. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so with but, but Bitcoin. They would just have Bitcoin, or would they have Bitcoin mining operations? That's not that's a good question. I mean, that's that's where you get into the shady portion of it because you, the only way I'd see an ETF is like you're going to have to combine, you know, like, and this is the terrible example because the theory was done so shitty, but it would be like Bitcoin, Ethereum, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'd have to kind of okay. make some kind of average. You know, if you're just going to do the average of Bitcoin, why not just buy a spot? Are they going to have like why buy on the ETF? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> what's I mean? Forgive my naivety here, but what's the difference in an ETF versus like a uh, a mutual fund or any of the other things that they package a bunch of stuff together and they kick out the bad ones ever so often and bring in new ones? It's what they're called and what their definition of it is. I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah. I think ETFs aren't actively managed, whereas mutual funds are. Uh, there you go. Okay. What <clears throat> does ETF? Electronic traded fund. Okay. Exchange traded fund. Yeah, that was exchange. Exchange traded fund. But I think I think the regulators are right. I don't think the space is mature enough. I think if we get Wall Street coming in, that's when you'll get that big boom and bust, and people might just walk away. I think it's been good that this price has been going down because it's given time for people to build, just kind of in the background. We've talked about that yeah. quite a while. Well, what they want is they want like they don't want the price to drop four hundred dollars in thirty seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's well, too much like wash trading yeah. type stuff for them to even want to get into that exactly. ETF field. And they bring up the volume, and that is a huge problem. Volume is faked over many of the exchanges, um, a lot of the top exchanges. They just came out recently with a, a list, and you know some of some of the bigger ones like Binance are all right, but you go OKEX is terrible, yeah. and Hit BTC is terrible. Well, Binance wash trades too, just in a different way. Yeah, well, you well, got yeah. you, you got to watch all the ICOs yeah. because. Um, you know, I've been approached and, and, you know, we're like, well, all these different market makers. Mm -hmm. You know what these market makers do? They take $10 million worth of your coin and $5 million worth of 
worth of Ethereum and $5 million worth of Bitcoin. All right? And that's their gas for taking that $10 million worth of your coin and trade it with their 10,000 wallets. And all they do is they trade back and forth with their wallets to get that frequency going. Yeah, the volume. Yeah. Right, to get the churn going. And then all of a sudden the market jumps in. Oh, I think it's the hottest thing ever. Everybody jumps in on it. And when yeah. that gas runs out of the market maker's wallet, then it's left all on its own. And 90% of its trading just stopped. So then they just go, boom. Mm -hmm. That's that's the big problem in the ICO market. Yeah. It's a, to me, it's like uh, buying fake Twitter followers. You know, there's no real meat there. And that's why we're going, um, you know, I'm going over to China to meet with one of the largest family entertainment conglomerates in the world and get them to utilize our tokens in their communities um, kind of as a coupon to get all their players actually using it. And then that'll run, then we'll run our SARA tests with their centers meaning to drive players in and have them, uh, you know, what Sarah does is it'll, it'll send a quest, people end up in one of their locations, and then we engage them with that location using our cryptocurrency. Right, so it drives demand or it drives that, yeah. that volume. So, but it's it's in real game players' hands, real in our ecosystem, whereas these uh, market makers are... They're just freaking robots. Yeah, they're not even in real people's hands. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's where it brings up the the idea of decentralized exchange and trading as well. And you look at ZRX um, and the OX project as a solution to some of these things because you bring up the ICO market, and I think the ICO market is going to change like drastically, and it already has since you know last year. Uh, but I know I've been I've been like two weeks behind it every time. Every time <laughs> it's, it's difficult, and that, that one of the big problems is getting on to bigger exchanges because bigger exchanges don't want to bring a token that has no discernible value on there to start trading because it looks bad on them. But at the same time, there are a lot of tokens that could be needed, wanted. There is a demand for it, but it's not as high as the exchange would want it to be. Mm -hmm. So you bring decentralized exchange trading, uh, the OX project, and that'll give opportunities for. I call them startups, but um, you know the the ICO markets, right? Which is 99 percent <coughs> of the whole cryptocurrency market was right. Startups. You, you had Bitcoin, then Ethereum was infrastructure coin that allowed everything else to start flowing, exactly. and Litecoin and all those started. You know, and that's why I think there should, there should be that uniformity, so we can exchange those tokens without needing that that uh, exchange middleman. Um, I think Binance, Ethereum, and some of the, the bigger ones will always be on exchanges. But you, I think you, you know you can <coughs> exchange tokens without that middleman. So Absolutely, you but you're gonna have, you have to find a buyer and you have right. to find a seller. So there it is. That's the that is the yeah. middleman right there. Exactly. So you decentralize that in a way, um, and there are a few different ways. Then you knock down that barrier to entry for the smaller projects, and you open up a greater pool of people because some people can't get on Bitfinex or some people. Don't, you know, they can't get on these certain things, but if you code it in a centralized way, I just think that volume is a huge problem. Bringing it back to well, 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 it is. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I notice, I mean, because I've been going into these ICO uh, conferences for, you know, what, since basically October of right. last year, you know, two to three a month or whatever, um, all, around, all around the world. What we've seen is everybody's fighting over the same roughly at this point, what, 20, 25 million people that have crypto wallets. Right. And I just recently realized that that's the wrong thing for us to do. So we're going and we're going out to bring in the game players because there's 2.7 billion game players yeah. that I can get my hands on. Uh, if I can get a fraction of them to jump into our, you know, our games our, and have to go in through our tokens, I've just brought in 100, 200 million people into crypto, right? You know that's kind of the, the game plan that we're working on. Is and safe space to enter? Hmm? A safe space to enter your point compared to. Well, yeah, but I mean, whether they've already they already know about virtual currency, they already know about uh, the virtual objects. We're just taking their known things and pushing it on a new technology, the blockchain. So instead of you going after people that already know about cryptocurrency, you're looking to target a new market. No, I'm going after video gamers. And well, yeah, they, yeah. that only involves <coughs> the crypto. Yeah, so a new market for crypto, not for gamers. 
100%. I mean, basically, to the gaming market, we're just a new type of World of Warcraft adult. And they understand mm -hmm. World of Warcraft adult. They understand gems in, in these games. They understand, you know, what it takes inside of game to buy and sell items at EVE Online. Okay, we're just getting them used to using that and saying, oh, it's secure, so you can't get ripped off when you try to convert cash. And every game player that finds that out is like, you know, blown away. Because it's kind of like buying RuneScape gold back in the day, so you can buy the secure way to make sure that item gets secured by a third party. Absolutely, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly the reason. I mean, it, it's a to us, the blockchain is a feature of a game ecosystem. Instead of 99% of these ICOs going out there, it's the whole purpose to have their coin is to be you know all around the blockchain. And it's like, that's a technology. It's a really great technology. You know, we're, we're here talking about it. But it's, you know, to us, a tool for, for the, the bigger ecosystem to benefit all those players. Because there are 2.7 billion people that need it, even though they don't know they need it. You know, they know they're getting ripped off. They don't like getting ripped off. You know, <laughs> Eric Voorhees came out and tweeted not mm -hmm. too long ago that he thinks 2019 will be the year of, like, the, uh, just the in-game collectibles and where oh, games absolutely. projects really, really... Well, look at I mean, look at how much money has been spent on Fortnite versus a free game. Oh my gosh! Yeah, even two K over the years. Well, I mean, with you, the, hey, bro, the VC points. Killed me. On <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, You're already most, trading it. For most token. people don't have any concept of how big of the video game network is. Think you all know how big the movie industry is, right? Yeah. Think of the top ten, the top ten grossing movies of all time. <clears throat> Add the amount of money that they've made for their for their creators, all of it together, okay, the top 10 grossing movies of all time, that comes to exactly half of what just World of Warcraft has made Activision. Wow. Think yeah. on that for a while. That's scary. <laughs> Did you say Activision? Yeah. It's Blizzard. You mean? Yeah. Activision, Activision Blizzard. owns Blizzard. No, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the OG. Talk to the OG here. Yeah, they were with the uh, Call of Duty franchise for a while making so long. Oh, you hey, so right. But, I mean, yeah. oh, I World of Warcraft like, makes like, like, billions like, of dollars a year and has year over year over year. And people don't understand this, that the, the video game industry is $110 billion a year. 72% of that is virtual items being sold to, to customers. At say like pennies, realize some of those virtual items sold to customers at pennies. When they're traded back and forth between the, the customers, they go up to hundreds and thousands of dollars. So by looking at just the the sales of the video game space, it doesn't even compare to 20 years of virtual items that still exist out there that are being traded back and forth, players to yeah. player, from players to players. So I mean, it's a massive, massive industry with a massive problem of I can trade items inside of any game all day long no problem but if I try to convert it to cash outside the game it's a massive theft problem and that's what the blockchain solves I mean because now we've got is you know people you may or may not saw these these items on here this is video game items outside of the game on the blockchain that I can trade without if if you know the game servers are down for maintenance, I'm still trading back and forth to wherever, and we get those on exchanges. Um, that's that's beautiful. So that's definitely a big thing that's about to explode next year. So, well, sweet. So I'll uh, let's move on to the next thing on here. Sad. I'm gonna call this sad group. Change. It. So I found this on Bloomberg, <laughs> on Bloomberg the other day, and it has a lot of really, really good information in it. Um, so just kind of going through the key takeaways. We estimate the amount of crypto asset market value needed to support economic activities to expand from around $500 billion next year to $3.6 trillion in 2028. 90-plus percent of crypto asset value will be derived from penetration of offshore deposits in the next decade. Currency and privacy networks, which I thought this was interesting, will be the largest beneficiaries as most fundamental value will stem from store value use cases. The upside in the, in the uh, five-year 
time frame in Bitcoin, 96,000, Monero at 18,000, and Decred, 535. Crypto assets, crypto assets which apply unique value propositions within deep and viral markets. The downside of Bitcoin Cash, 268, and crypto assets which attempt to inherit brand recognition and provide minimal technological advantage to incumbents. Little value in XRP. I thought this was a really good takeaway. In crypto second. assets, which are misleadingly marketed, not needed within their own network, and have centralized ownership and validation. Most other utility application specific networks hold very little value in their current construct. And so, over the next <coughs> few pages, you can kind of see figure two on that second page is the estimated crypto asset market cap over time. So, you kind of see the growth. Uh, that we're there predicting will experience over the next 10 years. And then figure three, estimated penetration of crypto assets as a means of exchange for each addressable market, which we can see on here. Gaming at number three, growing over the next 10 years. Uh, oh, crypto wait, trading. It, they're saying it's going to be in the trillions. What will? In this uh, uh, crypto asset market capitalization over time? Yes. Yeah. Going to 3.6 trillion for sure. And was it what 400 billion just eight months ago? It was like 800. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's the oh, that's the team. Yeah, that was the tip. Yeah. That's before anything was even built. I mean, that's, that's not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of see which, and then on that third page they kind of go across the uh, the sectors. So all those, and you can kind of see what they're predicting to go to zero as well. <coughs> What are they predicting to go to zero? So some of these with 100% in the red down towards the bottom, um, just at the current state of their technology. Yeah, they can go to zero? Bro, look at the... They oh, have, uh, sorry. Rude. In China, it's going to be high. They have a lot of faith they in have salt. Real, I've seen China real icons. Like machines, that's all I care about. They got a real physical machine. That's like Civic. Civic is being used a lot as well. Monero, Zcash. Yeah, what do they got going to zero? They got Monero going to zero? No, no. I just saw some fall down. I didn't know I got to read into it. They have They're Monero at almost 40,000%. Or something. I don't know. Yeah, they're talking about people. Oh, they're talking about how lending is going to Which one is Monero? Like the one right here. So over 10 years at 40,000%. Do you think anyone knows the fear of what's happening? Yeah. But Monero is not completely uh, uh, not necessarily secure. Uh, what do they say when they don't know who it is? Anonymous. It's not completely anonymous, and they, you know, saying it is. It's not. Yeah. No. There's like some uh, some hack where you can go into the hash and you find the public like, key of the person sending it. Mm -hmm. It's like fuck. Like that's kind of issue. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Well, it one word to get that. This is mine. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, it's not, I'm not gonna fucking hop on my computer and get a dumbass. Well, compared to it, compared to Ethereum, if you send send uh, anything to anybody on Ethereum, you get to track every single thing they've ever done with that wallet. The same with Bitcoin. Yeah. Hmm. The same with Bitcoin too. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they have interesting enough. Uh, interestingly enough, you're having. XMR year ten being at uh, forty thousand dollars. That's what he was just saying. Yeah. So it was forty thousand percent increase. That's not too bad for a yeah. decade. Yeah, if it, if it comes out, I think there's going to be one one that'll win between Zcash and Monero. It used to be kind of high on physics, but I think it's going to be Zcash or Monero. There could be room for both of them. Uh, the UOT competition. Yeah. yeah. They have a lot of these going to zero. Points. Yeah, we have a lot of these going to zero. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You don't the always have to have competition, though. <laughs> <laughs> one com one competitor can just die, kind of like the beta man. They they have high hopes for the lending sector as well. Do they have uh, uh, Long Island and Bitcoin on them? I took all my losses. I took all of them. I just put that Bitcoin and Stellar in now. Right, so if you can get to the world, you can start charging. Yeah, yeah. Bitcoin consumers. I'm going to be worldwide. Start rolling. 
was for, in, for Enterprise, there's going to be a wasn't like different tuition to the Lord. I can never have one. I mean, I could just go buy like a three yeah, hour job already. I pulled right? some because out. Because you're not emotionally tied to your bag. I pulled some out. I don't know if you see the one that was up. If you're going to turn yourself to that, I used to wish that you took this job. Sorry, plans. Yeah, it's been planned since the last one. We just haven't been marketing it. We need to start doing it. And I was like, there's no more. I was like, rely on. I said, I'm not hard to learn. I have enough data to post the website. I'm just taking that in Korea to try to get it. Ten or twenty, thirty thousand dollars. I've never been I don't so know. Yeah, you look I've heard a lot of negatives and stuff, too, but now we'll see if we can close to any of my Easter. I don't know. We know this now, but that's just my Easter. It's literally going to happen anywhere. Yeah, I'm sure that there's no way of actually stopping that. I'm leaving it up to the end. Where's the other data? I see those. What are the other ones? I think there is one. I think yeah, again, with the patient, yeah. uh, four, yeah. what do they have to Some of them on there with 100% in the negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody, uh, uh, okay. somebody showed that it can never go zero. Waves. If you've got two people that, that own the same thing, and they have, uh, and they hold any kind of value on it. You know, there might be one more million that's It's like a year ago. It's literally whatever. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So but, I, but for yeah. all intents and purposes, it's like that. Do you see that pump this year? I think it's a side point. But yeah. someone sold one for 96 Bitcoin, that's like the... Oh, that was that was that was that someone had a limit order. That's what one of the best things you could do is you set a limit order to the moon when you don't even expect it happens. You get a some scam, some hack pump. Or what some happened? Dude. So some kid, there was some guy had, I don't know if you remember this, this was a Binance hack a little while ago. It wasn't Binance that was hacked. Some guy's hot wallet got hacked that was hooked up to a trading bot, but it had 10,000 Bitcoin in it. Which is just so dumb to do. So he had 10,000 Bitcoin in it. Well, when someone got this wallet, they could start pumping. They pumped their own bag. Well, they must have had Siacoin. Because they, I don't know if you remember that. It might. It was either Sia or Sis. I think it might Sis. have been Sis now. Sis coin. And it was right after their, yeah. their mainnet launch. So this makes sense. But it was Sis. Got the hot wallet. Got all that Bitcoin. Some random kid had a sell or, sell or, uh for 96 Bitcoin. Just sell order in there. When they pumped the price up, that triggered a sell. So some kid one cents for ninety six Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. I mean, that works. That's, that's a lot ridiculous. of money. That's ninety six oh. Bitcoin just for one cents because it luckily got his. And if you track him, he might have been the guy that hacked the wall. True. No, no, that's the thing. You can find that. I don't know. I just stopped looking. What? <laughs> what? It's I was crazy. just more entertained that people were reporting it's a Binance hack when literally you can see all Binance is saying. A hot wallet was hacked with ten thousand, you know, Bitcoin. I find that more. That's awesome. Well, good for the cis guy. I know. <laughs> dude, what happened to that one dude who like pretended to get hacked on live? Ian Bellina? Yeah. What happened to that? Oh, he's a global ambassador for KuCoin. It's it's. I thought they. Which hurts my feelings. <laughs> I, I thought KuCoin's offices yeah. were empty. KuCoin's like, done yeah. now. No, I'm no, they yeah. they yeah. still got the office. Apparently, they have multiple. Yeah. I was also going too fast. KuCoin, man. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's a scammer. Don't listen to what he says. <coughs> Ian Shalina. I love crypt crypto Twitter always gives us that. He gets it, man. He's Dude, I need, we need to get crypto Twitter personalities. I think we should have like CCG personalities. Like, <laughs> I already have a uh, yeah, like, I'll just a partner. I, already I have, have a burner too. I have a crypto <laughs> burner. Yeah. You could follow the burner, but you we'll do something fun. Okay. That's funny. He said you could follow All right. could be we'll, uh, the burner. We'll move on to no. the next, <laughs> next points on here. So just have a few things to look forward to in quarter four. I know in November, uh, what is it, the Intercontinental Exchange? The yeah, BICE that owns yeah, the New York Stock Exchange. They're oh. launching back their crypto exchange, which I think that would be pretty, pretty big. I mean, just to see them getting into the space like that, just creating that. Completely new exchange. Goldman uh, Sachs pulled their or delayed their plans for the trading desk. Be, yeah, just delay because they want to go into custody. So that was where another fund, and this is another trade. When you, 
So they're, they were worried about trading the asset itself for clients, meaning they would have to hire an additional firm to handle their custody, which is why Coinbase is looking at doing custody, but doing it through BlackRock, who is the largest. Yeah. No, I think they hold $3 trillion in assets. It's absurd. They also, it's funny because if you remember about a month ago, we had a ton of BlackRock FUD because they got their head dude up there saying we're not interested in digital currency. So that's another thing where they're like, if BlackRock, who holds $3 trillion. Um, and what, hold on, what were we talking about before that, though? The uh, backs. Oh, yeah. So as far as, I think we were talking about custody. So Goldman then announced, it is true, they're backing down their trading operation. But Wall Street Journal takes that, the CNBC takes that, says, hey, it's Gold, Goldman's done with trading. Yeah. No, then the guy, it's four hours later, the, the actual CFO or whoever's in charge of the operation Tech goes, crunch. no, we're, we're, yeah. we're interested in Fake custody. News. It's actually like even more bullish. Like, no, yeah. we don't want to just trade because we want to be the asset. We want to hold the underlying asset. It's the fake you know. So yeah. fake news. Literally, he actually he said it too. He yeah. said it's it was fake news. Yeah. You'll realize more and more the more time you spend. Like, you got to double check. Uh, CNBC is hilarious. CNBC counter trading is. The oh most man, it is. It's, it's, it's got like an eighty-five <laughs> percent strike rate. I'm not kidding you. No, I'm not past two. No, the, the they have recently. It's, they've been counter traded, but that's why I it's. It's crazy. It's it really is. Bro, um, CNBC or a few of them, where I'll see that, and um, I'll literally just make a trade on that just to see. And it's really, I mean, so that'll be less successful so as just as financial markets work. That'll be less successful as time goes on. You can also just keep doing it and just put really tight stops. Yeah, and just hope. Events. It's like, so funny because they get stopped event, out too on every. Another thing. event coming up is the Bitwise. I know the VanEck of all ETFs to be approved, the VanEck ETF is the most likely yeah. because they are another one that wants to hold the underlying asset. Mm -hmm. And so, Bitwise has one coming up, but it, it's like it, I remember reading into it. They want to do something, but it's it's real. It's not going to have a shot because yeah. they're going to do the same thing that the two ETFs did before it. So it'd be another uh, fight. But yeah, so we'll, we're going to have another ETF rejection this week, yeah. likely. You know, yeah, and so you will be ready for <laughs> your short orders, ready with tight stops. Like for real, that's what happens. Is that from Gemini? So I believe it's a bit wise, and I believe that is the Gemini one with okay. the Winklevoss. They do have another one. The Winklevosses are. I mean, I people oh, can I say what they want. Those guys are biting bullets for the industry. They're yeah. out there going next yeah. ETF. Next they have been like for idiots. a while, Next too. Well, maybe they have their exchange regulated or something like that. Yeah, Kraken, I so think. Kind of yeah. Gemini. They have Zcash on there, too. Yeah, yeah. The custody thing. Yeah, they did. I think that's what's holding it up, the custody part. Yeah, the, there's down. custody aspects. I don't think any. Really? Yes. I don't agree with you, though. I like what they've done for the space. Like, even watching, I don't I mean, know. even Voorhees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eric Voorhees is a dog. He ripped, he ripped Ripple and uh, what's the guy that so, just joined their board what's that he? did the bit license? Eric, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, Gary Schilbert. No, oh, no, no. The guy that made the uh, bit He made the bit license. And then got out of public work and became a private. Then he did the consulting. Oh, I have seen that video. That's a great movie. He was ripping him. It yeah. was great. Well, um, Eric Voorhees and freaking. Um, Eric Voorhees just made his exchange KYC. And no. Shapeshift. Changely. No, oh, well, he is announced, yeah. yeah he's he's doing doing everything. And so, like obviously, in the space, everyone's I'm moving everything out of shape. Or, uh, yep. I can't think of a lot of guys. Changely. They, they ask for email. Everybody's shape shift because what? It's yeah, KYC AML you know. now. So, anti monitoring you have to submit your identity to them. Yeah. And so, I mean, in the space, that's, so that's, that's, that's probably coming from the national level. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's what they were saying. It's a matter of survival. We'll realize it is. like more more along, and that's that's back to the importance of decentralized trading and that OX project is everybody that has any type of if they're an entity they're going to have to be regulated for. Um, you saw this before Bitcoin came in with a few other people trying to be digital currencies, which is reserves like Liberty Reserve and things like that, and those people just got sued and they got put in jail, regardless. So bankrupt or bankrupt, yeah. yeah. Something something happened to them. So that's why we need that decentralized trading, and uh, it's being built on, which is good. Nobody's nobody's realizing it or recognizing it because it's not a real need right now. But it's just going to be the uh, entire beginning idea of Bitcoin is completely changing now that Wall Street's getting into it. So that's probably why they give so much credence to uh, Monero in this, is because there's still a whole other world of people who don't want it to be controlled, or you know what I mean. The privacy is always going to be important anyway. It's like the main backbone. You know, what crypto people want is to be private. Uh, 
their own money, have control of their own money. So Monero's cool. always Monero's the cash and the proxy. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 and I'm not they're, super. They're trying to play the play the game back and forth with the politicians. That well, yeah. you know, basically any um, you know, like a, any uh, uh, financial transaction whatsoever, um, the government, all governments, want to know who the parties are to figure out if there's uh, uh, things that they can get taxes off of. Um, you know, they say, well, it's to keep people from laundering money. Yeah, it's to get yeah. taxes from people. Yeah. That's what money laundering is, is going outside of uh, <clears throat> that's what tax is. taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well it's, it, it's if you got your money outside <laughs> of taxes, <laughs> you try to get it. <laughs> Literally, what mo money laundering comes from is, is groups that got money outside of t having to pay taxes, like drugs and that, then they want to get it into legitimate businesses. So they... In so they can pay Ozark. taxes with it. Watch it. Ozark and uh, <laughs> what was the one where he was making drugs? The other dude, Heisenberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He used a car wash for that. But yeah, I. You're dude, talking about uh, um, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah. yeah. We got a corner store by U of L that has an open sign that nobody goes into and has really nice cars out of it. I was thinking, you know, we could talk to them. Oh, You're my like, really God. Because <laughs> they're shooting dice out in the front, and they got a nice open <laughs> sign. So I'm assuming, like, it's something. It's a, that's, what like you, that's what's called a front. Yeah, no, we no. can swing by, like, I'll get some Pop-Tarts and see what's up. They have, they have a secret room in the back. Yeah. I love secrets. <laughs> that's what it is. You, so, you go in that back room. Oh, I've, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen yeah. it. I've seen 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 it. i have seen it i have seen it i have seen Really? Oh, yeah. You don't want to mess with anybody up in Indiana that has a hog farm. <laughs> <laughs> All they, uh, what is it, the teeth? They can't yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's where the, the acid is for them. And, and my, my cousins up there have hog farms. All right. <laughs> that's that's cool. Cool. Moving on. Moving on. Hey, has anybody seen the uh, the Yahoo Finance commercial? Yes. I saw it the other no, day, and I was just, I was just like. Bring it up. Bring I haven't it up. seen Let's it. Yeah, hey, hold hey. up. It's on Google. It might as well. We want yeah. to see it. Wait, the commercials on Hulu? So I know you can like, buy and sell it right there. Yeah, I love how Yahoo Finance is well, still watching the like it's used. Oh, yeah. because yeah. they like, purchased by Opera, or I forget who bought them out, and like literally every aspect of using Yahoo is gone except the finance part. Like, except I remember finance. Actually, actually and I think Yahoo, Yahoo might still have one of the most used fantasy football leagues because of how hard it is. <coughs> it's like one of the most... Um, active, so I think a lot of people have Yahoo emails still for fantasy football. Uh, yeah, Yahoo fantasy the other sports, on but it's funny. Yeah, sure, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny so because like Ryan bought Yahoo. That's who. Yeah, Ryan bought so. Hey, what's up, what's up, guys? Yeah. I have a short video for you today. Uh, Yahoo, once, once, once. I, mean, once I don't think that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our new commercial. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm gonna give commentary over. Say new Yahoo Dude, has anybody used that voice chat in the Discord yet? You know what? No, I meant to put I that on. I use it for gaming. Dude, I got By the way, I'm glad we were in. For gaming? gaming? Too, for yeah. I forgot. I'm going to turn that on. I'll be in a group. It's pretty much just a lobby with, you know, you can. PC or Xbox? PlayStation 4. I do play on my PC, but I need to update my PC. I don't like the way he says it. PlayStation 4. Yeah, no, I, I know. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. sorry. You're right. I definitely am a. The, there was I a. There, do you remember the movement? We we were lucky enough to live for the movement where like there was a battle between Xbox, I was born into which like is something the kids now, even kids now, you make that joke like you know how can I even say the kids these days? I, I started when I'm PS2, 24, so but it's true. That. Like these guys aren't gonna have to remember the the battle between like. I'm, I'm a, a PS4 player, so I can play with this group of friends, or I gotta get an Xbox so I can play, play with, with these three group, friends. Yeah. Because there's no. Or you get into crypto and you play with both. Yeah, or yeah. you play into crypto and just sit in your room all day and talk to no one about magic and then that's where I came in. in. Yes. <laughs> well, but that—that's. I mean, what everybody wants to get rid of is the, the console problem of the g games play different between them. You know, from the PC to a console, that kind of stuff. It's nuts. I did. I couldn't find it. 
Uh, but I was, I mean, we were just watching NFL, oh, yeah. and I was, I just can't believe it was the oh, first wow. crypto commercial I'd seen. Oh, yeah. Yahoo like, Finance crypto commercial. Oh, no, 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 they had uh, two in the Super Bowl. There's a really sketchy one in the Super Bowl. Did they? Yeah, there's a yeah, really yeah. sketchy one. Yeah, I do remember that. That guy actually came to one of our workshops, actually. Crypto really? Yeah. Dude, you, just, you guys contacted him for that? It's so cool. He like no, he, he, uh, he stopped doing it. He said it was just an experiment. That's not the best example. Yeah, I don't know any other example. Man, what a blind side, though. Yeah, I was such a fan. I was like, the latest job in finance commercial. I already have. I'm just not going to know. I just love as sentiment changes, so it's good. It's good. Oh, man. oh, it changes. It's, it's, it's less sentiment. Okay. So are we sure they have Yeah, I, I remember seeing them. Uh, see. Yeah. 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 It was awesome, I though. Partake in this I just wanted to see. Sometimes I just want to see. What Let's see. I'll, I'll go ahead and get us to our last kind of point here. So IBM, they're launching their cross-border payment system called WorldWire using the Stellar blockchain to be used to facilitate um, international transactions and probably put Ripple out of business. Um, now that's probably taken a little bit too far, but I don't see why anybody would try and use XRP or Ripple rather than just going with Big Blue and, and all the things they're doing with the blockchain. But it's Big Blue? I thought IBM. Oh yeah, that's why I'm, I, the only things I'm in right now are Bitcoin and Stellar. I thought Ripple worked with Western Union Two months, two months they have ago, a, they, they have a pilot. They, work. they had a pilot with Western Union. Western Union said, "Oh, this is trash." Yeah, I just stopped working at Ripple when I found out like the name of the company and the coin are separate entities. I'm like, "How do? Yeah, how do you interrupt it?" Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people you know, that come well, in and see us, and they're like, they're yeah, so how can I get? How can I get Ripple? Ripple's working with the banks. All the banks are using Ripple. Oh, I gotta have oh, it. Let me and we're like, about oh, X and X man. Hold on. <laughs> that really oh, is. I still. People come in, and that's that's what it's literally ripple like right away. Yeah. And some Ethereum. <laughs> Ethereum. <laughs> yeah. Ethereum. Yeah. There's. <coughs> heard that pronounced so many ways. Ethereum. 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 Speaking of, speaking of Ethereum, I don't know if anybody has anything to add on the IBM stuff, but that's kind of the next point we're going is just what is the group thinking on Ethereum right now? I mean. One eighty to one fifty five. Uh, still long at two hundred and twenty five. You um, long? Well, for the second, bro, they got the 200. Every time they reach it, I got a hundred dollars. Not trading that shit. Yeah. You're crazy long. Is there a short squeeze coming on that? What's the RR? Yeah, That's tough to tell. What's the RR? Chill out. Say what? I'm just doing it till the meeting's over. Oh, no, I'm just. <laughs> you guys roasting me up. No, I didn't say anything. I love it. I love it. I'm just. I am, no, I am. Make them all right now. Make them all. He said. Point three R R, send it. Just send it. Point three, hey, you know your R. Yeah, if you know your R, you're going. Send it. I'm like, I think it's the tightest stock ever. I do too. People are running. Yeah, they're running out of capital runway. I mean, you think about if, if you raise ten thousand ether and you had to think about, all right, how are we going to keep capital in play for the next two years? Price is getting as low as this. I mean, I think that's going on across the board. People are just panic selling just because it's trying to preserve as much U.S. dollar as possible. I saved uh, Damon a lot of money. Yeah, there's a lot of selling pressure. Did it break 198? Yeah, so it's you know, he gets all amped that it's at like 72, and then he gets absolutely crushed. And he's like, well, you get out? Wait, no, bro, you're skiing, and we're, 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 we're planning uh, for a change. We're planning for a change. There's that like, worry in South. Exactly. Where the Plebeians are like, 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 like,
Imperator or whatever of blockchain. I'd probably yeah, back back up to the Two oh two. What was it? Yeah. It touched one eighty. It almost a week ago. <laughs> I wasn't investing. Does anyone um, <laughs> got with Brian on this indicator here? And what, how he explains it to you all? you were Ryan. No, Brian. Which one? Yeah, I'm Ryan. Was it RSI? DMI? It's, it's, not, it's a DMI. I'm just not a, I haven't looked into it. I'm just directional movement index. Directional movement index. Okay, that's fine. So you just get a talent like growth index fund. So I think, I think like when the, the green crosses, whatever the red is, indicate. Indication of bullish movement, and then vice versa when it crosses the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, he's explained it before, but it, it had to be months so, ago. See how it got rejected, kind of right there in the middle in August. Like that would have been a uh, a bearish indicator yeah, because it, it, the green. Oh, the chart's and different. Uh, I just be on Twitter and all that. What's the red? What's the green? What's the black? I just, I think the green is indicate indicate of like a. Bullish and the red is obviously bearish. So when you see that cross there, searching through, um, what, right around April, that would have been like a bullish indicator using that DMI. And then right between May and June, like middle of May, you can see where it crosses below it. So then that would have been another uh, short opportunity. And then go where August is, and you can see where that green got rejected when it was trying to break above the red. And then shortly after it, so it dumped down. Does that actually so I, I don't know what the I don't know what the black one is. Yeah, I can't remember either. I mean, he's explained strength. it before. Maybe that's what's strength? Well, I'm I think it what, is the what's strength. The, what's the green that you're at? So those are both. That's a positive. So so the red is a negative directional. Okay, movement. The, okay. The, the red is measuring negative negative yeah. directional movement. The green's measuring positive. Mm -hmm. And I and I honestly don't use this indicator. I'm assuming there's an average in there um, involving the black line. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. Mm -hmm. because I mean, Maybe yeah, like almost like an. If RSI. you have a positive and a negative, and there happens to be another one, then that's the average. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I think the middle so one is the, uh, or that might be the RSI, but I think that might be the strength of the, the direction. You know what I mean? So if it's moving down and that black one's going way up, that's that means the strength of that direction is is higher. Mm -hmm. you know? But I'm not Brian, so. Are they trend markers? Yeah. So yeah. that. Would, yeah. This right here, this is a, a momentum indicator for the black line. <laughs> the the whole indicator itself is right. a momentum indicator. Yeah. So yeah. all three of those lines together are the DMI. Mm -hmm. Typically, you use right. momentum indicators. You know, when we're in a in a trend that's confirmed, you know, that's a clear downtrend, so it's okay to use a momentum indicator. When you see guys using RSI on a like on a whipsaw or like a something that's just crazy, you know. Typically, it's it doesn't it's not super practical because we're not in a we're not in an already confirmed trend. You, you can see that here. We are right now. Update. Hit the play button on the chart. Right now. <laughs> yes, you can plug these just different indicators on on charts. What was anyone so who's else? anyone who's a little uh, more um, fundamentally advanced? Wanted to comment on what happened with Ether the other day, where pretty much they decided to change the block limit or something. Yeah, like oh, did they go through with that? Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like rewards rewards minors. Minors. yeah. It, I think it rewards minors, but it's a. I know it was another situation where I saw a lot of. I think that's just to, to go into proof of stake. They're just moving away into proof of stake. Oh, okay. In the army is. Are they uh, basically pissing off the market? Uh, no. <laughs> well, they, it's, they, at some point they'll have to because the, in the white paper they go proof of work to proof of stake, so they're slowly yeah. cutting them off. I guess. Wonder and Ethereum they, Classic already made the jump, didn't they? I didn't know that. I agree. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Okay. Because yeah, they're planning on making the jump too. That would have been that would be one selling point. I think is if they just kept it uh, <clears throat> proof of work, then you could say, okay, there's a clear difference between Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. Depending on which one you want to be involved in, but I think they're going to make that jump too. They do, I believe. So, so what the problem the problem with that is, is you might be able to find it. I don't. You, you might be able to find it. So, so right now you can't get a short long chart for any other. Exchange yeah. and accept uh, Bitfinex. Yeah, and I know that when Bitfinex <coughs> recently just launched their September eighth future, 
second at launch, not only were you in a downtrend, but you got a lot of guys who are bit pro Bitcoin guys on BitMEX who've been trading, you know, have large account balances, who on the launch of that future absolutely plummeted. So I'd imagine short. The new ETH per perpetual yeah, swap. Swaps, yeah. yeah, and that was crushed when it opened. Yeah, so do they have more. So I swear I saw screenshots of it. Like they do. Fifteen fucking currencies they could turn. Now I've got eight. No, it's nope. like it's, it's uh, Cardano, Bitcoin, Cash, EOS. Well, did they have like, more? Like, I, I, like, I think at some point they had like or something Stellar or something. Yeah. They, they've had ones before, but I think the volume wasn't worth keeping them on, so they dumped them out. Oh, Honestly, okay. the volume on XRP. It's not even. Stuff, it's not even worth doing either. Your main ones is like BTC, ETH, EOS. Yeah, I made a telly showing like Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, sometimes yeah. like, oh yeah, Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin Cash. Like ones, the volume on still. Dude, I closed, as, I, I had issues overnight, I'd fall asleep, and I was like, close, I wouldn't close my words, and I'd get fucked, you know, I'd be down oh, 10%. And so I had, right before that big crash three days ago, I had 10 Bitcoin Cash, and I had a short order. And I was like, sucker, you're going to be responsible today before you go to sleep, and you're going to close this order. I wake up and it's down a hundred fucking dollars. Oh. I had the biggest meltdown. I started breaking shit. What you don't have a stop? Uh, no, I just I just close them instantly because like sometimes you know it goes past. Oh, no, it's right past you. And put a stop every time you do a trade. You you can sleep at night. So please, you can stop down. You got line. stopped out. Or if not, you're in the green. Mark, and you should know if you haven't already found out yet. We just had a three hundred eighty dollar up move. Yeah. Go ahead and try and market close your. Close your short on a three hundred dollar eighty up move up with Bitmax. It's going to yeah, give you order remote. submission error, order submission error, yeah. and then you want to go close it. And oh, when you, in the meantime you get liquidated, yeah. so it and happens you, all. The time. And you're not even safe on the stop there either. My stop when I had when that happened, my stop closed about twenty five dollars slippage, like further along than I wanted it to, and lost more than it was worth. Well, where do I go to do stops on Bitmax? I'll show you how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you feeling better, Tucker. I had a short at sixty four eighty, and I woke up the next morning at like sixty, like six hundred or six thousand. So that was worse, yeah, much worse. <laughs> and I closed it out before I went to bed too. I'm just gonna paper trade for the longest time before I jump in. You need to. Like, that was my big mistake. Like, Dude, honestly, I hopped right in. And I was making thirty percent. So yeah, there's 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 yeah, it's like This is one of the charts Brian already had. It looks like. We're back in the range, boys. Yeah. So it's back in the back range. Up, possibly. So I bet it if, it, if it gets through that, if it gets I mean, through this that is line, it's going to the bottom. Is what it's saying, right? Yeah. Is that Brian's? Yeah. I think we're just Break this to the bottom. So that, that line, that's, that's just kind of uh, right, testing ground. It's going to go one way or the other? Mm hmm. So. It's on that line right now as we speak. So if it starts going up, go to the left a little bit. Put us in the. Uh, is that what is it? <laughs> Put day. us in the daily. Yeah, this is on the. Uh, it's in twelve hours. One day, two, one day. Mm. We also what the fuck? Doge really? Like didn't the the Doge creator two years ago told people to stop using it? Now Johnny Finance is like whatever. Put He's on genius. It. Actually, if you look at if you look at Doge coins. Dogecoin, from a fundamental standpoint, it's a, it's it is it is an extremely technical, like fundamentally sound coin. Yeah. They Should move, the, and I love it. I love when they. I, I mean, I, I'll it trade it from time to time. Joke, I'll tell you what. <laughs> since I got into crypto, the first coin I ever even the first coin besides Bitcoin I traded was Dogecoin. I mean, it's There's been a dog in the space. Dogecoin. Arguably, Dogecoin's been around. It's it's almost like the joke is Dogecoin and Bitcoin the two blockchains you can't mess with because it's just like it's it scales it's it's efficient. Look at it compared to Bitcoin Cash. Those are my favorite. When it, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You probably know more technically. It's just from what I've read. I've seen some you know some tests on it where it's pretty good. I don't buy and sell you know Dogecoin a ton. It's one Doge. It's one Doge. It's in. There's no higher amount. Just low amount. Yeah. So you can send 10 million if you want. Oh, okay. It's very fast. Yeah, it's so cheap. That's the classic. Yeah. And it's a meme coin. It's secured by Ally. Really? So I'm whenever sure that is, right. I get a sloth that comes out of the box. Yeah. I know you're I know you're an animal. Sloth. They, they got they got hundred trillion of choice. Hundred trillion black max <laughs> transactions per second. I don't know what it is. Don't be slow. 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 Don
Yeah, we're in a critical range here on Bitcoin. Definitely going to have to watch it. Um, I think, I know Skylar and I have talked about it. Brian as well, he still has his $2,000 Bitcoin target in range. But I definitely, there's got to be some blood in the streets. I can get a convincing close below like 59, 5,800. That's where you're going to want to start worrying. Well, yeah. it's but, everybody to leverage trades. So we don't have blood in the water. But it is awesome leverage trades. Because that would, so that would kill cool. everybody out of crypto. They get every account liquidated. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so <laughs> what I've been looking at is, is, I mean, when we approach this level, there's clearly buying interest the last, <coughs> the last three times we approached 6,000. Um, I don't know how deep into your trading you get into, but I try and watch, you know, I watch things like order blocks, you know, how much money and how much volume between shorts and longs and stuff like that. There's been a, there's been a buyer on Bitfinex accumulating yeah, Bitcoin yeah. at, at massive amounts, and he has not been liquidated. He's buying a hell of a spot. And he's buying spot with slippage, meaning, like, guys are borrowing money to short, right? I'm on a margin 50, you know, just hypothetically, tucks 20 times short. I'm 50 times short, right? So BitMEX is, you know, letting us trade more than what we have with, and we are shorting into a buyer who is buying spot a lot. I, someone did the math on it. I think it's like 28,000 Bitcoin he's amassed in the last four, you know, in the last, since the last run up. Typically, I mean, I'm, I'll probably wait. We're in the range bound. I'm going to, I'm going to play trade longs with tight stops and, and shorts with tight stops based on like what I'm actively looking at. But as far as like this 6,000 level, I agree with Brian. Like if we get it, the, this weekly right now is nasty and it's going to close in three, like two and a half hours. Um, and it's a double bearish engulfing weekly. So we've closed, we're closing past the two past weeks of gain we've had. Um, I'm going to, continue to just play this 6k level till we do get a decisive break and then that's going to be nasty i mean that's where the real bloodshed comes in yeah i remember i put in an order for a short when the market was crashing like that that day where it went to shit yeah i got liquidated in literally 40 seconds i was yeah. looking at it i went up to 15 down 15 down 30 down 40 and i'm like oh fuck and it yeah went on. and then it went right back to the price three minutes later you know i was just like yeah, I've never. That's, I've never been that. That's upset. Arthur filling his pockets with all your money. Don't even go on on that. <laughs> the Bitmax, if you don't understand, so what happens is, is when you get liquidated, it goes to the Bitmax fund, right? They got their emergency fund or whatever. If you have looked at it, it's like it's it's insane. It's like twelve thousand Bitcoin now. Like, come on, Arthur. Like you're you're stealing. It's almost like the dude from Binance, who granted I love him, but how are you charging? They had their profits in the first quarter. Binance's profits were what? Like something billions? It was crazy. And someone's like, you know, if you truly care about your... BitMEX used to let us trade for free. No fee. For a while. No fees. And it was awesome. And now they're... I mean, gosh. Arthur's filling his pockets. For How sure. do you think he pulled up in the land book? <clears throat> you know, free fees? He know. is. He on, and that's a good Twitter follow, too. Arthur Hayes. He's very involved. He'll call people out right He's there. Sad. He'll call people out, and he. Uh, I saw the greatest tweet ever. I added it to the group. Yeah. It was some guy making a meme of people on a swing, and people get knocked off long and short, and it's just one guy in the middle. It's Arthur just, like, making all the money, you know, because it doesn't <laughs> matter. He owns BitMEX. But he responded, like, you're correct. Yeah. <laughs> you're, our trades are his money. That's just short. It's crazy. It's anger. It's already up. Oh, excuse me, I'm... Well, I didn't tell you how to trade. I was, dude, I was just. <laughs> I, was I mean, just, I made a profit on my, my up, my long. Now I'm going to do a short for you all. If I lose, who cares about it? <laughs> it's all your all's fault. Uh, uh, man. If, if he wins, it, he's the genius. If he loses, anyone gone to dare it by any chance? No, no. What? I I tried, but I, I didn't. End up it's tough to understand. What is it? Real options. Dare it like like is going to start rivaling Bitmax. Their volume, what, they their volume is decent. Now? Their volume is decent. Be careful too. Look at it, exchange volume. Yeah. Now I know for a fact Bitmex, Bitmex will not pop up <coughs> on, on Coin Market Cap because of a perpetual swap where they give you leverage. So the volume is isn't a hundred percent, but their volume, without a doubt, they're turning over, <coughs> if not the most money in now, crypto. I think what their bit only they don't have hundred X. No, they, they have, have fifty. Over. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't even go. <laughs> I'm on a 50x right now. I feel it. Um, 
fuel what? Adrenaline. Oh, that's what it was. They're they're um, they're a bit engine. trading engine. So what yeah. they trade their engine is on. It's ridiculous. You're not going to have Bitmax is not servers. Right. And guess what? Once you start trading with a large engine, it's not easy to migrate. You know your processes to something bigger. I don't know if you remember Binance had an issue this year. Yeah. Uh, Binance had a problem with their servers. They had to do a whole. Um, they had to read update the whole system it took like eight hours so that's where if you go into your binance charts and look at there's usually some lines on some of them like just a flat line it's because binance was down for you know whatever derivate promises that will happen so well, if, you, if you go to market buy you're not going to market buy with something like a couple yeah. extra bucks you're actually going to get what it's at probably i've heard about this company here yeah which is another reason too if you want to think about it from like institutional standpoint of wanting to trade and have an ETF approved, institutions do not put up with buying large blocks and having a ton of slippage. Like, I put, what, $200 down on a trade, institutions are putting 10 million, 20, 50 million, 100 million dollar trades at a time. They can't afford, crypto isn't ready yet for an order block of 100 mil to come in and it to be filled that quick without having like 50 points of slippage. So that's another reason why these ETFs. That's probably why institutional money. I think some people are trying to move to Deribit, but for one, uh, from what I heard, Deribit can't. They wouldn't be able to withstand big orders. Oh, they really? Could, they could do well. I mean, they they could, but the, the volume's not there to be able to fill. So what I heard is that they they're better for, for right now for like smaller buys. When you start throwing into the people that have deep pockets, they're trying to throw 10k on a single trade. I don't know if Deribit would. They have the the volume. Oh, yeah, right now their volume isn't it. But the engine, yeah, no, the right. the engine no, with, the as engine, far as what we do for right now with the next. But the volume, they wouldn't be able to fill the order. Just sit there. Well, I guess I'll kind of leave the, uh, moving towards the end of the, the meetup, any, you know, kind of open the floor up to any topics <coughs> or anything, questions, discussion points anybody would want to bring up before we kind of wrap up. The ASIC boost? Mm. Yeah. Really? They, uh, with the last three or four days, it got turned on, and it's supposed to bump the hatch rate up drastically. Okay, so you know how I was angry at you all 45 seconds ago? Well, now it's 30%. Close it, close it, 30. Close it, close it. I don't know. Take profit, take profit. Take profit, take profit. Close. Yeah, keep going down. I just want to look. I just want to look. The more, the more right. you say not yet, right. the less profit. So we were down. right thus far? It went from 200.85 to 200.40 in literally 15 seconds. Can we watch? Please. <laughs> It's 200.22 now. It's going to go sub oh 200. Just let me fucking keep the short. Oh. <laughs> and what, what What do you trade? Bitcoin? I don't see anybody uh, stopping. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we're all <laughs> I would be. This is why. This, this is why Please let, let me keep it. Nobody's got your, your gun to your head. I do that shit at work. I'm going to talk to patients. Dude, Mark is going to fly out. I'm going to talk to Mark. I'm going to talk to Mark. <laughs> Buy some Papa John's, boy. Okay. Uh, I just made how much did I make? Whatever, twenty percent. I can get new. Uh, hmm. It was just forty percent. Hmm. Two seconds. I don't know. I have to look. I think it's ten percent. Close position okay. happened there. Oh man, I just. I made. I'm still holding my. You just long. lost ten percent. I made point zero zero one two. I don't That's know how much. Sweet. I put you hold your long for that one. I'm, I'm holding that shit for it. <laughs> for what? I have a long open it on the December. I somehow caught the bottom like that wick when it went down. So I'm holding that. Wait, you had a line? How much were your fees? Hmm? What are your fees? I assume you're making it up to have your profit. But well, I mean, it's the, you mean like the, the maker taker? Funding. Oh, yeah. uh, there's no funding on the futures. Right. Yeah, it's only the swaps. Well, well, well. So I just sit there. Yeah, but it was a long contract. So. Yeah. yeah, futures are not closed in December. That's dangerous. Yeah, it is. No, but I mean, it's, it's also a good hedge block. Yeah, because uh, I'll short the swaps and I'll long the futures. Smart. Even though the shorting the swaps right now is a negative, you're pay, I'm ba essentially paying Bitmax to hold that. It's gotten negative. Yeah. Hey, I guess one more right thing now. before we go. Has it? I'm just looking. Has anybody not been on the new member portal? Yeah. I think it's cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, it's I would love some feedback because there's a few things I'm going to change. <coughs> 
as far as like on the coin report pages there's just a lot of data so I've noticed they've been loading slow so I'm gonna kind of split that up a little bit but any other feedback you all have for sure let me know take it all into account just to make it you know the best platform possible but I'll send it over to you to make a free account yeah. same coin a few times but I've not uh, been above water for a while and I won't be for the next uh, 10 days for sure that's a lot of <laughs> Let's hope not. I am flying over a few oceans. Yeah. Well, awesome. I, I guess. Statistically safe to drive. Yeah. I guess if we don't have any other discussion points, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Uh, we'll be in here. I'll have to get a, a solid date. I'll definitely be on Thursday. Uh, we try to do the Sunday meetings every few weeks. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep everybody posted. Hope to see you all in here very soon. If you all are in interested, they're going to try to do a cross reality crypto club meeting on Thursday without me. Thursday, okay. Oh yeah, we have the blockchain club at U of L. They're meeting Tuesday. Tuesday as well. On Tuesday? Yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome. So you're. Yeah, I'm going to be You only have next week. Is what so you're on just now getting fully operational since the school just started. Yeah, or just one of the other. It's not trading every month. Just a second. Tuesday. And we have a basic two weeks after that. Both are actually like in office officials. Which I think is cool. It's just that they have to do it. They really like me. You have the whole week. I've never seen that happen. What, you have the whole week? Yeah, you have always had yourself together. I don't understand what's so weird. Yeah, there's a lot of sarcasm. There's a, there's a lot of sarcasm in that. I hope that was sense. Seventy percent of the time, two thirty five also seventy percent of the time. Obviously, people like to send out flyers. I try to do Instagram ads or something like that. Like I'll make, I'll just do a long trade here. Hopefully, it goes up fifty percent more than Instagram ads. There you go.